Bam. Bam. Hey, I love this today. Smackdown. <laughs> Smackdown. Smackdown decarb session. Decarb boxelation. Decarb boxelation is what we talking about today. Decarb. Yeah, it's going to be great. Let's go. Oh, look at this. I like this slide. It does look nice. Look at that nice, uh, nice progression. Yeah, it's a nice progression uh, all the way from the left. Uh, obviously, the flowers to the purified. I like that isolate product. Uh, Send that to me. I want guys. that to be my screen shaver. We're gonna do it. Yeah, the screen shaver. Oh, I the like that. Shaver. That's a good idea. <laughs> okay, so guys, what is <laughs> what, what is, is decarboxylation? What is decarboxylation? You guys, let us know what you think decarboxylation is. Actually, it is a chemical process. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Okay, uh, so we got CBDA going to CBD neutral. Hey. My Dyson doesn't run at 150 degrees C. It doesn't? No. Oh, well, what do you uh, get? It's something a, else? A Hoover, a Shark, get something a Kirby. Else. Okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, you get something else. Yeah. yeah. You got to get some of uh, the Turpy Trap. A Turpy Trap. Yeah, that's Let's what go. you need to Tur get. Okay, that's what, and that's where we're going with yeah. decarboxylation. Yeah, so decarb. Okay, so look, when it comes in, the, when it's in the plant, uh, all of your cannabinoids are in the plant, right? Yeah. They, they are uh, officially acidified. Okay. Um, in which that what that means is when they uh, are in their uh, trichomes and they're sitting there, they're all they're acids. They're in the form of acids. Okay, that's because sure. the plant uh, material itself is is a neutral pH, and so um, the oxygen that you see here. Let's just take, see if I get a pointer there. Can I get a pointer, oh. guys? There. Look at that. That's actually a point. negative. <laughs> a negative. Uh, so that. So what that means is that it's an acid. Okay, this is an acid. CBDA. What they call acid moiety. That is an acid moiety. This wow. is an alcoholic uh, moiety. Why didn't I think an acid moiety? Yes. Okay. Got so it. when Ooh. we're when we're taking CBDA to CBD neutral, you can see. Look at it, it's gone. Bam. What? Yeah, it's gone. And CO2 is out there, so CO2 it got floats sucked off. out with the Dyson. It did. It did. That's why you got the vacuum on there. <laughs> okay. In order to make that reaction actually happen, you have to have heat. Okay. Okay. Um, it's nice if you have vacuum because um, all the other stuff that's around the CBDA is kind of stabilizing it, and uh, it's it's not there's there's not a lot of oxygen now, around. Okay, so then cool. it's not reacting, yeah, in, in creating other stuff. So you want it under vacuum. Do you know again. how many questions I get about just this? Yeah, it's yeah, and this is the same thing that happens with THC. THCA to THC, THC neutral. Neutral. Yeah. Now, look, uh, the, what's beautiful about the CBD here, you can see since it doesn't have this negative on here, yeah. it doesn't have this CO2, this decarboxylic acid in there. This is very soluble in CO2 liquid. Oh. Okay. This is not so soluble in CO2 liquid. Okay. Oh. So if you're going to extract... Uh, that you want to really try to convert this CBDA into CBD so it's extraction fast. Now, with the image, mm -hmm. this sounds suspiciously like chemistry. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do chemistry. <laughs> okay, so that's what that is. Okay, chemical conversion of an acidic molecule to a neutral molecule using heat. Beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, it is a beautiful I thing. I like that. And uh, people figured this out a long time ago. Um, obviously, um, pe when people smoke, uh, a joint or they smoke a, a, you know, some of a biomass material and it has CBD in it. Uh, when the flame hits the CBDA, it immediately carboxylates and it becomes neutral, goes into your lungs, gets absorbed through your lungs and hits your brain. Bam. Bam. Just uh, like that. And so it's a, a immediately absorbed. Yeah. All right. So that's why you decarboxylate, right? You're going to you need to activate, and that's my second point here. It's an activation. If if it doesn't decarboxylate, that's an activation. Really have a, yeah, activation. There's a there's an exclamation point. It at is. The end. Yeah, I thought I thought it would be better with exclamation points. Of a distillation, <laughs> activation, formulation. I like it. Like that. So distillation. Yeah. Because you're you're making distillate. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You're usually using the distillate in an ingestible or a topical something that you're going to ingest, right? Right. And, um, and you need to decarboxylate that. Right, yeah. So, and th the reason you need to do that is because of dosage. Uh, that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, if you have an acid and it doesn't get bioavailable, you have to have a lot of it in order to get a little, uh, a little of it into your bloodstream. Oh, wow. So, <clears throat> you know, there are some formulations that are out there that are coming out with, with like the acidic forms, of THC, CBD, or other the minor cannabinoids, and they're, 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 people are trying to patent those. 
And that's um, why you see such yeah. high, like even I've seen some hemp oil on online and does, and that's at real high dosages. Is that kind of the same thing? Um, maybe I, I don't, not really sure. I think, no, I think that that's hemp oil, like, like hemp seed oil. Oh. And they say, you know, a hundred thousand yeah. milligrams. I'm like, off. what the hell? No, no, that's, <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's, that's a okay. gimmick. That's uh, I think that's a gimmick. Yeah. Like if you go to Amazon, you type in hemp oil, yeah. what a tincture or something. Yeah. They say hundred thousand yeah. milligrams of. So if I typed oil. in olive oil, it gonna, I'm going to look like I'm taking a <laughs> teaspoon of a thousand olives. <laughs> Um, there's no, no end to mar there's <laughs> no end to marketing prowess. I, I mean, you, hats off to those guys. A hundred thousand milligrams. <laughs> okay. okay. So you need that but, for <clears throat> distillation. Yeah. For dosing. Yeah. Got it. And so then, activation, obviously. So it's bioavailable. And the bioavailability. Yeah. So when you when you said when when it goes, your body cannot absorb the the CBDA or the THCA. It cannot absorb that. Right. When you're ingesting it. Well, it's not that it cannot absorb it. It does absorb it, but it's a very small amount of absorption. Oh, so you need yeah. more of it. Yeah, so you so have to have a goes high dose in order to go in there. Yeah. Gotcha. And then, <clears throat> so when you when you decarboxylate, you don't need to decarboxylate if you're just turning it into flour and smoking it. Uh, right. Right? Right. Because yeah. that's the action when you're lighting it and right. bringing it in. You know, a lot of... Uh, there's this happened a lot more in the past than now, but a lot of people would um, decarboxylate their biomass and put it into capsules and then take it that way because it was activated. If you would just put flour into a capsule and take it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be bioavailable. It wouldn't be nothing. Right. So a lot of people do that, oh. you know, for for that. So okay. The other thing you want to think about it. Uh, there's a real good reason to decarboxylate just if you're going to distill something. Okay. Um, and that is because you, you don't want all that CO2. Remember that CO2 yep. we, that yep. came off when you do the reaction? You don't want that coming off in your still because it kind of pops, pop, 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 just like pop rocks. Oh. And it, it basically <coughs> starts to, yeah. Kind of like the, the headphones just a little while ago. Yeah. And then what happens? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Just like that. I was like, wow. So you. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't me. <laughs> okay. Uh, so <laughs> if you are doing some distillate, guys, you're going to need a dark decarboxylate. It's pretty obvious. But yep. for those of you who are just learning this, this is something you need to think about if you're going to take a winterized oil to a distillate. You have to decarboxylate in between if Got you it. haven't done it already. And then you have formulation. <clears throat> and that is when you want to formulate your oils, such as MCT or oil-based systems, you want to have it in the neutral form so it'll go into the oil at a high at a high, um, you know, rate. So gotcha. Yeah. Oh, now question. I'm sorry. This is a question that uh, somebody actually asked me and that is what happens? Can you, uh, cause one of the other things that you're getting into is uh, obviously when you're decarboxylate, you're capturing terpenes, mm -hmm. right? So we're going to be talking about that. Can you, can you decarb, um, biomass flour and then also smoke it and get I an think effect? So. Yeah, I think so. So, okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Next. Sorry. All right. No problem. So this is the distillation activation formulation. Okay. Gotcha. So that's the, some things we need to do and think about, and that's why we do them. Uh, that's why we um, decarboxylate. Okay. So there are um, two basic different processes for decarboxylation. Okay. Two. Two. two yeah. Two. There, there are some other ones that but, I'll talk to you a little bit about. Okay. Oh, we already talked about it. Smoking. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that is another uh, process for it, but... Um, you know, we have uh, the first step right here is where we take the material right here mm -hmm. and then we um, grind it up and then and then you can decarboxylate it or you can just skip this step and, and extract. Right. Okay. okay. All right. So this is one point at which you are able to decarboxylate yep. and then um, you can go through some de-waxing or, or something like that. Some people do that in the machine or you can do that outside the machine depending on how you want to. Uh, operate and how how you want to do that and then you can go do all your solvent removal and right in between here is where a lot of people like to decarboxylate and yeah. that's because they're taking the oils out of the extractor machine or not of the evaporation machine and now they are cooking the living daylights out of it they're putting it into a reactor and they um, you know move it up in temperature and they, they do a stirred reactor and that way they're decarboxylating right there. The advantage to doing it here versus here is just volume. You know, you, you have a smaller amount of volume. You, the bulk of your volume 
in the extractor is, is, is what's called raffinate, right? It's sure. being discarded. Sure. And um, you're getting a small amount of oils out, say 15 to 20% uh, weight per weight. And then, um, you know, and that, and so it's, it's just a little bit more convenient to handle, right? Sure. But, 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 but wait, there's more. Um, I'm waiting. There's a good reason why you might want to do decarboxylation. Looks like seven reasons. In the biomass. Must be seven reasons. There's seven, yeah. And I thought seven is a nice, nice number. All right. Yes. Um, and uh, one of the things that I was reminded of, okay, yep. in the last slide. Yeah. with our flow yeah um we there was a whole i I've, I've had two people tell me that they had um universities yeah are doing eight week um courses on cannabis really? what to do eight week courses eight week courses okay and six grand six grand that's it yeah and um, they and they said must be like a half a credit and these guys <laughs> oh, said we you know they want to get in the industry and they said you know they get more information from us than they did from the eight week course all right so that's no. Well, yeah, I mean, never send a professor to do a professor's job. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, and we appreciate that because you guys are asking a lot of questions, and we just keep, pile, you know, just piling on. We're, we're answering questions, real-world, right. real-time yeah. questions. Right. Well, we've been doing this for a long time. We've been educating our, long our long we've, time. we've educated hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah. Um, and, you know, whatever. So, and you can't, uh, you can't really, uh, you can't really make this stuff up. And we don't, how much do we charge? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, all right. We enjoy good. it, and yeah. it's good. And, you know, hopefully we sell a little bit of equipment here and there. Yeah, we do. We yeah. do. <laughs> we do. But uh, we have a lot of fun just doing this, enjoying the time. and It's a the, lot yeah, of whatever. fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there another table? <laughs> okay, all right. Let's move on here. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, seven okay. reasons to decarb. Okay, seven. You can't. Okay. Number one. Sorry. Or number seven. Do you want, should we count down or up? No, I don't. Oh, we'll count down. We'll, yeah. count, we'll count up. Okay. Okay. C count down. Okay. Seven. So seven. Number seven. <laughs> you can recover usable, natural, and desirable essential oil terpenes for use as flavor and aroma in formulation. So you're recovering them and reusing them in formulations. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, that's, that's the big huge. One. That, that is, is a big, big one. because you can formulate with them. Down the road. Right. So awesome. look here. Looky here. Looky. Um, you, you do an extraction. Now all your terpenes are in your extract. You're doing some more post-processing. And all your terpenes are still in the extract, but they're yep. they're not recoverable as a separate stream. Nope. And and then you try to, then you cook the living daylights out of them here so and that they, you can distill. And they're not great. And they're not great. They're no. not great. And if you stop right here, okay, you think, oh well, that's that's a you get a high terpene rich uh, you know fraction. Well, yeah, you're not really able to do, you're not able to formulate oh. you're not, because um, you're getting a, a bunch of different things all together. So uh. if you want to have different flavors and aromas that match the biomass material, you take it out ahead of time. Directly from system, the biomass. Directly from the biomass. Where you don't have solvents, you don't have anything. all that anything. processing going on, and it's just, it's reacting. We've talked about residuals. Yeah, we've stuff. talked about residuals. And so. that's now, if you do it later, it's in the terps, but at the beginning, it's right. beautiful. So the second, uh, oh, wait, wait, we're on six, right? Six. Number six would be CO2 extraction is five to 10x faster with decarb biomass. In other Seriously, words, five to 10 times it is. faster? It is, because the neutral molecule, which we talked about, the decarb neutral molecule yep. is much more soluble in CO CO2. Right. That's because CO2 is a nonpolar You said solvent. that on the chemistry slide. Yes, yes, we uh, did. Yeah, we did have that, uh, the chemistry slide. Converting from CBDA <coughs> or THCA to yeah. the neutral. The neutral the CBD. The acid doesn't like to get into the nonpolar CO2 solvent, okay? Now, a lot of people get around So it's more this. efficient. Yeah, it's more efficient. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually, it's a, it's a matter of time to solvate, okay? Um, but let me let me put it this way. A lot of people want to do like, um, you know, we've been doing. Let me see here. We've been doing co solvents since twenty since twenty fourteen. Wow. On, on our equipment, okay. Yep. People like to use co solvents. They use yep. a little bit of ethanol. Yep. In fact, the very first uh, piece of equipment that we made um, and had in commissioned was uh, the the we had it running solvent all the time. Yep. And so we put in like four or five percent uh, ethanol into the stream, and so yeah. I notice there's lots of people out there right now, you know, 
talking about the new thing, which is co-solvent. It's <laughs> not. In fact, there's been some really great papers also written by um, John McKay, Waters, and all that crew. Well. They actually have, a they did a whole bunch of really neat work on that. So, so if you want to get those papers, um, let me know and we can send them to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so the CO2 extraction is 5 to 10x faster. Um, you can you you can do a co-solvent to, to speed things up, but it's even even faster if you decarb. So number five. Number five. Recovery. Okay. Recovery of terpenes in their pure form enables preservation and formulation. Underscore preservation. Yeah. So yeah, you're able to basically get the pure. pure where do you put them? Yeah. In the freezer. Yeah. And then once you have them in the freezer, jar them up. What do you do? You, you, I mean, you have they're in a jar. They're in a they're sealed. They're not exposed to the light and air. You're not. You're certainly not cooking the living daylights out of them for five hours in a stirred reactor. And there's nothing else in them. <clears throat> yeah, and there's nothing else in them, so they're they're pure. So that's what's the those beautiful are, we call those thing about angel that. tier. That's angel terps. tiers. Okay. Those are angel like, tier like terps that. because like there's nothing else in them. They're beautiful, and there's a, there's a good you can sell them. Oh yeah, you can sell them. That's that's coming up. Sorry. Uh, but I I want to hit on I formulations real three. quick. Look, if you. If you are trying to formulate a tincture or you're trying to formulate um, or doing any kind of blending operation, um, the, it, you want to have a pure terpene so you can actually do that. If you're yeah. adding cannabinoids, if you're adding fats and waxes, you're adding other flavonoids wh by, by using like a terp sauce or something like that, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a reproducible event for manufacturing. Wow. Right. Right. So because you, you have to have some guy there making a calculation, adjusting the formulation every time he makes it. Yeah. So that's that's it's actually not a repeatable, not a repeatable formula. process. Yeah. So when you get out the uh, you know, when you get out the, uh, you know, those those angel tears. Mm -hmm. OK, that's yeah. actually enabling consistency in your process. So every I mean, I'm getting so many questions about that's formulating a really big with, deal. By it the is way. a big yeah. deal. Yeah, because now you can even test the terps and see what's in them. What type of terp? What is the blend of the terpenes? Right. What is it? Is it myrcene rich? Is it beta caryophylline rich? Is right. it limonene rich? Right, right. See, I'm just showing it's up all right good. now. It's all good. <laughs> He's got them. He it's was good looking stuff. them up ahead of time. I saw. Him. <laughs> I was not. I pay I, attention. You pay attention. I do right. pay attention. Well, you get the gold star. Well, I don't. Right. <laughs> That's the gold I star. Try. But I don't tell him I pay attention. Okay, we're gonna move on. <laughs> Number. Uh, was it number four? Yeah. Well, yeah. four. You're not okay. cooking the hell out of the oils. Yeah, that's right. So that's the, the whole thing with degrading it. And look, if you if you want to degrade your all of your terpenes, yeah, just stick them out in the, yeah. you know, just. And it's not that it's all bad. In fact, I got there's a bunch of reasons why it might be okay. In fact, yeah. if you come uh, to our facility and you do any kind of demo, we have we have both ways of doing it. Yeah. And there's there's certain times in which you would do it and certain times in which you wouldn't. So yeah, there's some times yeah. when you but want there's good real reasons why you'd want to do it in the biomass. You want golden <laughs> bacon, and sometimes you want to burn the shit out of it. Right. Next one is you can sell those. You turpins. can sell them, and that market is huge. It is. It and, is. And the purer they are, the more you can command so for those. So they're not like uh, they're full spectrum terpenes. Yes. In other words, there's you know um, there's there's hundreds of different terpenes in in, 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 there. Full, in the vacuum distillate. Absolutely. And uh, that's what's so great about it. And you can sell those. Um, they're not like uh, they're not like crystal clear. They actually look really great okay. they do they th i mean and they <laughs> smell great yeah they have oh my great gosh and the market aroma. out there go online you you can sell those for between five and seven grand um even i've seen them even higher for really good terpenes right and and, and they're not synthetic i mean those are real beautiful right. terps so a lot of people who have you know like longevity and like the um the cannabis marijuana market a lot of times they'll have you know terp terps that are specific to strains yes and those that's actually really great and they can you can sell those you can actually get them and and make a you know make a vape if you want to for that particular strain. that has that really, yeah really aroma and okay you can convert to thc to cbn also which is really awesome you can do that in the biomass that's the best place to do it a lot of people want to degrade the thc and the cbn later on in the oil I don't recommend doing that for a lot of different reasons, but if you're interested in that conversion of THC to CBN, it really is the biomass. It really is that vacuum distillation yep. equipment that you yep. need to, to make that happen. So think that's about very that. cool chemistry, by the way. <coughs> yeah, we should is. do a thing on that. Sometime. We will. We should do that. That would be we fun. We'll do that. All right. And then it also dries out the biomass. That's um, you perfect. know, so 
you know, biomass typically has like five to 10% water or more, so, or, or even more. more. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it uh, starts off with almost 75% water and then yep. you dry it typically to 10, 10% yep. or something yep. like that. Okay. If you're doing ethanol extractions, that 10% water is now in your ethanol. Yeah. Okay. That's and the, you don't that's want that. The, the Remember thing. all of the other things that we talked about. You don't want water in your ethanol. Right. You don't want water in your ethanol. So, but when, what we do is if you do, if you dry it out ahead of time, you, you put it through the vacuum distillation equipment. Uh, you're decarbing the biomass ahead of time. You're not only getting the water out, but you're also getting the terpenes out. You're also making it faster to, to basically um, sorb and desorb and also extract. And you have all those all those benefits so, related to manufacturing reproducibility. See, I, th this is a great list, and and mm -hmm. these are the seven reasons to decarb the biomass versus the oil and the biggest thing is you can formulate you have more control and you've got a more efficiency yeah all yeah. the way around absolutely these are cool yeah i like these yeah so you know um there's there's a this this will help you along your way it's it's not it's not a, it's not that decarbing the oil is completely all bad no it's not that at all it's just it has different advantages and disadvantages exactly that's all it understood is. so um, so anyway, so there are basically three ways to decarb. You got vacuum distillation, you got stirred oil reactor, st stirred reactor to heat the oil, just like I said, and then we got torrefaction, which is smoking, ah, you know, or, or burning. Torrefaction. Right? Yeah. I mean, um, if you look at a Starbucks bag, it says on there uh, by torrefaction. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's they smoke cool. it. They, well, they, they heat <laughs> it up under an inert environment. Um, you know what I mean? So that's what they do. Yeah. So we could use our. Our vacuum ovens, along with some distillate, to, to make some nice, uh, nice coffee beans. I think. Okay. Yeah, we should do that. All right. No, oh, whatever. Oh, I'm okay. in. Let's All right, do we're it. in. Yeah. Yeah. We're so now we're just going to do a quick overview of method one, oh. and uh, so, and then we'll um, we'll kind of uh, wrap it up here, oh. um, and then we'll kind of pick this up uh, in the next episode because we're already kind of getting over our time oh yeah we want to be respectful of your time i'm having a blast though okay so here we go uh vacuum distillation method one uh first uh you got you know one to two hours 150 degrees you can see there's a vacuum um, oven in the background we have there's different types of pans and, and there's a whole science behind uh you know how you would really deal with the pans in, in in a vacuum oven to get the best uh, mass transfer out. Yep. Okay. I think this is a typical AI oven and you know, the, yeah. it's got a five, five of the, um, yeah, shelves. it's got five shelves and each of the shelves are independently heated. So it's, it's kind of nice. Um, that's a typical AI oven, but that AI oven is connected uh, we connected to, to our product here, which is the, the Terp trap. Yep. And, uh, what that is, is here you have a, a chiller, chiller, um, and here is a, condenser here the vacuum comes over here um the the uh, vacuum oven uh connects here and then and we do all, all of, of those that angel all. tears well, will drip down here and they start the filling pump. this up really nicely glug, 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 glug. <laughs> and then uh, we have a little um we have a little uh valve there that you turn on to get them all out and then you just pull it out yeah well, you can just pull them out so if you want to have a situation where you're doing a batch by batch or, or, or trying to control the batches for your terpenes coming sure. out. So you can disconnect this right here and you can bring that in, put a new new one in. So if you have like multiple batches that you want to do and you want to keep the process running continuously, you just need to order another one of these things to, to go. Just so that. you can swap them. Yeah, out. just so you can swap them. Hot out, swap yeah. them. And then there w there's a jacket for the condenser itself. There is a jacket for the condenser. This is a rendering. Yep. Um, but if you come to our facility, uh, demo with us or anything like that, certainly you can see what we got. Uh, you know, we have we have a couple different areas that we use this at. We use um, we use it for like uh, for an ethanol condenser. We mm -hmm. use it for that. Um, and then we also use it for, um, you know, obviously turp traps. Right. So and, and we have it on a couple of our couple of our systems there. Um, so, um, yeah, so I guess um, we're just going to kind of close up with, uh, you know, what is the vacuum distillation? Why is it? Why is it so useful? What what's what makes it so great? OK, so imagine in your mind's eye that this is a trichome. Okay. Okay. You ready for that? You visualizing it? Yep. Nice those are mushroom. The, those are little mushroom things. They're on translucent. The they're yeah. they're light S color. Sticky. Yeah. And and imagine even further that there's these beautiful little terpenes in there. They're uh, just kind of hanging out there. Yeah. They've been synthesized in there, and they're just they're just mellowing. 
they're just kind of nice. Yeah. They, Come on. They Must they be really an indica. They really like. They really, really like each other, and they like everybody else, yeah. and they're just making everybody smell so good. And I want to paint a tree right now. <laughs> There's happy little terpenes in here, happy little trichomes. Okay, so then all of a sudden, their life gets turned upside down. What? Yes, here comes oh. the harvester, and now they're drying all the water, and just like SpongeBob under the... <laughs> Under the, wow. under the light, you know, <laughs> just shriveling up. Okay, but they're still happy because they're, they're there with their family <laughs> and their friends, okay? Nice. And then comes the chemist. Oh. The chemist. The evil chemist. Yes. <laughs> okay, so they grind them up. They don't really <laughs> experience too much of the shear, <laughs> but, uh, but oh, it, it, it wait until they hit, they hit the vacuum, oh okay? My. And all of a sudden... They start moving, and they're like, I don't know what's going I'm on. I'm out of here. They're actually <laughs> moving. They start moving because they feel it. We don't know. They don't know why they're moving. Okay, oh. and there they are. They're moving very, very slowly out, and they diffuse out over what's called a chemical gradient. A chemical and it's gradient. A, it's the force that – it's the force. The force. The force that pushes them out. It's drawing them. <clears throat> it's drawing them out. And that's because there's this is warming up out here, and then also the vacuum is there. So they start to boil. And then they migrate through uh, the resin that's in the resin. It's they kind they of like a, they evaporate. And then you can see I'm, I'm coming out. Yeah, see, there's at least one little guy made it out. And now they are going to migrate and diffuse to the condenser, hit the condenser, and, go. and little screams. Little, little <laughs> screams little of joy. Screams. Of joy. <laughs> yeah, of, of joy. Going, <laughs> finally, I'm back in my fluid state. <laughs> wow, this is so, rare. Yeah, so this is it. This is it. So <laughs> I reduced, like that. Here's the thing about what's great about vacuum distillation. Um, there's a reduced oxygen environment so yeah. that you're not, you know, oxygen's kind of evil. It goes wants to kill those terpenes. It wants to it wants to degrade them. You want to get out of oxygen. That's what's nice about vacuum. Um, uh, Non-volatile molecules are stabilized by this matrix, so the cannabinoids are still kind of hanging out in there. See, they're yep. they're not they're not they're not doing anything. They're not they're disturbed. Like, We're staying here. Yeah. We're staying here. Yep. Um, decarboxylation produces CO2, so the CO2 kind of comes out. You can see the little CO2 molecules there. They're also coming out and diffusing. So the with heat it. and the vacuum yeah. allows the whole plant to release the. Yes, terpenes. To, re to release the terpenes. And uh, this is time for not recovery, but time for d uh, basically migration. You got to have migration out. So there's yep. a, that's how long it takes. That's if, you're, if you are looking at you know, um, improving the time it takes to uh, decarboxylate, all you need to do is reduce the particle size. Because if this was this much, if the particles were about this smaller, Yep. Then it would then be that much faster. So when it goes into that, it's a it's wa it's water and it, because it's condensating, it's water and terpenes. It is. <laughs> then it's, it's water, terpenes, and CO two all coming out. But there's all in the vapor phase. Okay. And so the diffusion is super quick, and it's it's all migrating towards down its concentration gradient towards the condenser, and the condenser is pulling them out. Yep. And it's actually uh, it's actually producing the um, the the mechanism for transport. And that pure, I mean, so it's just basically evaporating from yeah. the material yeah. in through the condensate into the, and you're saving those. So that's pure, right? It's just a pure terpene. And that's why that aroma and flavor is so fabulous. Right. And it's, and then you can formulate with that because it's so clean. Here's a big one. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So yeah. this is a, what's called a V mixer. Yep. And uh, on the other side is our terp trap over there. And that's a, yeah, this is a big, big V mixer. So this will do um, almost. I think it'll do something like a half a ton an hour or something along those lines. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. So you know, so if you, you know, smaller and it ones. And spins. This is yeah. the one that you know you keep threatening it to put me spin. in. Yeah, yeah, we can do popcorn in that one. <laughs> um, but this is the one thing to be known. If you got, a lot there? of people yeah. are looking for. Uh, yes, yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did you see how long it took yes. to get there? No, no, I, I had wanted to do that. <laughs> I had wanted to make some coffee. I like in it in the V mixer. But so okay, but uh, a standard uh, situation yeah. you're going to okay, use a so three, a one, three foot by three foot oven. Yeah, a three foot by three foot oven. One, one, <laughs> excuse me, one uh, e one forty. Okay. Yep. A three foot, three foot by three foot oven, and typically, um, you know. We typically do two ovens for for one of those 140s, yeah. just because it's 
it's easier. It's not that the one oven can't keep up with it, but it's it's just easier for a matter of switching the pans and everything together. Yeah. So that that's what and they're inexpensive. Yeah. So and you can hook up up to uh, up to five uh, ovens onto this one. And what's interesting is even though you're adding this at the beginning, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't take more time. No, Most it doesn't. people think it does. Yeah. We should, we need to talk about that. We will do that in the next episode. Really? Yeah. So we'll talk about, Sweet. you know, how this actually doesn't take much more time. You, you really, in fact, it doesn't take any more time at all. So uh, I'd like so, to see the yeah. comparison of the two. So let's do that next time. Yeah. Okay. Let's I do it. I love it. Hey, I hope this was helpful because this is, uh, you know, going through the decarb because we get a lot of questions about decarb and terpene capture. And, you know, this is the best, best methodology that we have seen is method one. But we're going to explore the other methods next time a little bit and what the differences are in comparing, you know, the time invested in, in capturing the terpenes and decarboxylating pre, post. And are we going to sample the Torfaction episode? Uh, we, c we could probably do that in the next episode, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little Torfaction separations. All right, man. Thank you for what being great, here. Uh, what a great summary, man. That's, that's awesome. All right, so we'll see you next time. See you Thank later. You. Keep the questions going. We'll be around answering questions, so stay, stay tuned. Let Thanks us know a lot. what's going on. Thank Bye you. now. Bye. Are you stuck in your hemp or cannabis business? Are you not reaching your processing goals? Here at Extract Lab, we offer a free 20-minute CBD jam session. A CBD jam session is a conversation with an industry expert, not a sales call. A conversation where you can talk to us about whatever issues you are having right now and where you are stuck. We will help you uncover any issues you are currently having in your business, create a solution to fit your current scale, develop a future scale-up plan based on your needs, and help you make your processing goals a reality all while getting your business plan back on track. Schedule your free 20-minute CBD Jam session at 1-651-600-0036. Again, that number is 1-651-600-0036.